US dollar versus the Russian ruble. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. This is the pair we will look at. In this video, US dollar slash the Russian ruble. Weekly did data points and we go all the way back here to 2003. Something that is quite uh, apparent is that um, the US dollar, especially since um, mid-2008, it's been on a massive tear against the Russian ruble. So far it is up uh, what, 200, 207%, that's pretty substantial in the forex market. But so, an, a pattern that becomes quite apparent here is that it is not that infrequent for the US dollar to spike against the Russian ruble just to have a massive pullback. Uh, super spike, super spike, 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 spike. There are many spikes and many pullbacks. Meaning if you can capture the spikes and the pullbacks then you can have some very decent uh, gains. Very decent indeed. Okay, so after this huge rally we had here, um, this is uh, to an extent related to um, the Russian economy weakening due to the fossil fuel business being in trouble and also you had the whole Russia gate uh, craze which was bearish but you can see that, that the US dollar it's been rounding out a bit here and we have many patterns. On the one hand you do have a rounding bottom here for the dollar potentially a cup and handle pattern forming. On the other hand, you could make a quite strong case that this is also a double top, okay? So you have multiple patterns here. And the dollar is doing the classical thing that we've seen many times, a spike, pullback, spike, pullback. We recently had a spike and we are now in pullback mode. Uh, if you look at some of the prior pullbacks, we usually went back to a key moving average to find support. Given that history, there is reason to suspect that the US dollar is is likely to weaken a bit further, potentially here finding support at, to, at the 20 week moving average, which, it, which there's a lot of history uh, of it being used as a support level, as you can see, in, pri in prior pullbacks. Also, you can even see that the 50, 50 week moving average in green is another potential level, that would be uh, an even even more uh, lucrative uh, opportunity, but that is to be determined. But so far, this is typical. Spike, crash, spike, and crash. Given the frequency of this, um, um, you know, there, it, it is very tradable, very tradable indeed. Okay, so that's the, that's the pattern we see here. A very repeatable pattern. But part of the problem though is that when when you do not have, well not problem, but when you do not have these periods of periods of spike and pullback, you can have these prolong prolongated periods of chopping sideways as well. Uh, if you look at the correlation between this pair and the S&P 500, there is a 20% positive correlation. Looking at the daily data points again. So here you can see, in the more detail, the spike and the pullback. Let's measure the spike, okay? The spike was, you know, 36-ish percent. That is very dramatic in Forex because if you use, you know, a leveraged, uh, you know, Forex platform, you could turn that into some real, really sizable moves. The pullback here, it's minus 13-ish percent, measuring from the closing price. That's also pretty, pretty decent. The key moving averages for support here would be the the 100 and the 200 day moving averages. If you look a bit at the history of the RSI here, you see that we generally speaking stay in the zone. We are, we are, we are now looking multiple years back. We do not like to be above, we do not like to be below. Hence, the current pullback it could have more momentum left uh, before we get into oversold territory. And you know, these are like the key moving averages to watch out for. The accumulation distribution line, it is uh, confirming um, uh, the pullback. And you can see here that the ED level is deeper, it, it's, there's deeper selling here than it was over here. That's interesting as well.
Let's compare the USA and Russia a bit. Okay, so here we have a big blurb of uh, text. Let's get to the numbers. Okay, this is GDP purchasing power parity. Uh, 2017 is the latest number, so you can see 19 trillion for USA, 4 trillion for Russia. So there's a pretty substantial difference here between the two countries. Uh, real growth rate 2.2 USA versus 1.5 uh, GDP per capita also um, I mean the America is literally double that of Russia Looking at some uh, Composition here you can see that the GDP Composition by sector it in the USA it is very heavily weighted towards services though And you could make the case that Russia the Russian economy is more diversified Interesting, the population below poverty line is actually higher in USA than in Russia. That's uh, that's interesting. There's the inflation rate, uh, unemployment rate. Uh, let's look at uh, some other numbers. Yeah, let's get the percentages. Okay, so this is the unemployment rate by percentage. Uh, somewhat higher here in Russia. But um, the big question is that you know, this is, of course, the 2017 numbers, while the more recent uh, numbers are most interesting due to you know the lockdown. Let's look at some of the import uh, and export uh, partners. So here are export partners for USA: big on Canada, Mexico, a bit of China and Japan. Well, here you can see that uh, China is actually number one here for Russia, which is interesting because due to the whole uh, uh, trade war between uh, USA and China, that could very likely lead to China leaning more towards Russia. But this number could then go up. And uh, China is uh, an emerging player, hence it is in Russia's strategic interest to have a very uh, cordial relationship with China. With China. And it is a bit of a risky game, long term, for USA to flex a lot against uh, China. I mean, there are many, there are many countries out there that uh, are very defective, and on that list, uh, China is not that high up on the defective list. So there's sort of like it's a question of which kind of country, defective country, should you prioritize. There are the import partners, uh, China, Mexico here. Of course, uh, there is a lot of trade with neighboring countries that makes a lot of sense. So there shouldn't be a surprise here that some of the close neighbors are some of the closest partners. Here you have the unemployment rate uh, divided also by gender. You can see that uh, there's substantially more females here unemployed in Russia. And one of the policies that we've seen in Eastern Europe generally is that there's a lot of incentives now for for women to have the babies uh, to um, replenish, uh, you know, to increase the population growth internally. There are many incentives uh, for doing that. Part of it is that uh, increasing, uh, well, increasing the population through immigration is something that the that the extreme right is benefiting quite tremendously from. And that is another factor to look out for, because a lot of people have, um, they make the assumption that um, the number of people uh, subscribing to far-right ideology is reflected uh, in, you know, in the numbers in the ballot booth. But, you know, the big paradox is that because the far-right has been very much kept out of the limelight, uh, the the numbers underneath are very much hidden and some of the more recent studies which you know when you do deep data analysis uh, try to sort of like uncover the hidden factors uh, there's a very surprising uh, number of people who subscribe to these very far-right uh, idea ideologies and that is especially true in the countries which have had a very high level of immigration so it's sort of like yeah, it's, it's 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 always always whenever you do any kind of policy you need to look long term look at you know the bigger ramifications and a lot of a lot of policies can have unintended side effects here is the forex market uh, which is where we find this pair you have the US dollar and the Russian ruble it's here here you can see you know the, that 
The US dollar has strengthened 18% from the 52 week lows, 13% of my weight from the 52 week highs. But here we can get some other other data on Russia. The consumer price index change 4.5%, 1.8 for USA. Total tax rate in Russia is 46%. Uh, approximately 10% more than uh, USA. Forest area is uh, significantly larger in Russia. I mean, Russia is a very, it's a very big country. Let's have a bit of an intro into the forex market. Uh, the value of a currency is quantified either vis-a-vis -vis another currency or as an index. As an example of an index would be, you know, the U.S. dollar index, in which you know the the U.S. dollar is compared against the basket of currencies. Now this is how you read currency pairs, okay? So let's take the euro slash US dollar as an example. In this case, euro, the EUR, that is called the base currency, while US dollar is the quote currency. And if there is a 0.71% change in that pair, it means that the euro has strengthened 0.71% against the US dollar. Okay, so let's say that the euro as uh, US dollar pair is at 114.73. That is, that means that you need uh, 1.1473 US dollars to buy one euro. Okay, so that's how that work works. And whether what is on as base or quote, um, that is uh, often a result of uh, the numbers. Um, Preferably, you do want a small, you know, a smaller number reflecting the pair. And if you have like, if you have like a currency that's gone through like a, a huge, a huge inflation, then you know you don't want like some huge number. Um, that then, and you can just solve that issue by flipping, flipping, you know, uh, who is the base. Okay. Uh, trading forex illustrated, illustrated, illustrated with the same pair. Uh, so euro bulls. Okay. So you, let's say you are bullish on the euro. You would then send an order to buy euro slash US dollar, which means that you are also selling, uh, you know, being bearish US dollar. The big benefit, hence, with Forex is that it is much easier to be short. If you're going to short stocks, it's a it's more of a big deal. On most platforms, you will have to pay interest. The interest can be pretty high. Many times it can be difficult to short stocks. Uh, there's not enough uh, stocks available to short. I mean, it can be a bit of an ordeal. You also have to pay dividend. Dividend. It's a bit of a mess. It can certainly be done, but it's an ordeal. In the forex market, it is very easy. You can be a bull or a bear. It's super easy. So let's say that you're bearish on the euro. You would then send an order to sell that pair, which means that you. That you are also buying, you know, being you're bullish the US dollar. There, there is an incredible number of forex pairs, uh, so you will literally always be able to find some bull market or bear market out there. The forex market is much, much, much bigger than uh, most markets. The only market that, that is bigger than the forex market is is the derivatives market. Anything else, it just pales in in comparison, and and the cryptocurrency market is like minuscule compared to forex. Because the market is so big, it means that if you are an expert in forex, you will have a much higher authority than someone who is an expert expert on stocks, as an example. Because you know there's more money, there's more there's more at, more at stake uh, in forex. Approximately five trillion U.S. dollars in daily volume, which dwarfs uh, dwarfs the global li liquidity of the stock market. That is uh, around 100 billion dollars. The market is open in you know, a forex market, open 24 hours a day and five days a week, which is you know very beneficial. There is massive leverage that you can have in the forex market, um, up to you know 500 to one, uh, and more in some cases. Uh, which means that one dollar would control five hundred dollars. Uh, that's obviously risky. One of the reasons why many of the forex brokers uh, enable you to have this huge leverage is because the vast majority are not going to win. Okay, because when you when you have that big leverage, you really need to be correct very quickly. You do not have time for the position to work in your favor, and which bas which basically means that. Uh, your probability of being correct has just gone down substantially. Hence, if you are going to get into the forex market, it is a 
good, good idea to start with much smaller leverage and be on a very serious platform. Be, in a, be on a platform that works for your interest. If you are on any platform that is very pushing, is, is pushing you to, almost bribing you with gifts to to become a bit to become a, a a member, then you should be very suspicious because then it's if it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is because most people are losing. There are usually no commissions in the forex market, but here's a huge but: the tightness of spread and execution and execution speed that can vary substantially. Okay, uh, one of the terms you will hear a lot in Forex is PIP. Guess what is the PIP? So PIP, that's an acronym for point in percentage. A PIP is usually the last decimal place of a quote. So let's go back to our pair. To our pair. Okay, so let's say you have a move from 114.73 to 114.74. That would be one PIP. The US dollar slash the ruble, very interesting pair. Uh, let's quickly look at the S&P 500, which we often do. Okay, oops, uh, let's do it uh, this way instead, like that. Okay, so this is the market uh, today. Um, yeah, we have a bit of a, we have some weakness today. I mean, it was much bigger. Let's actually look at the futures. I think it's the like US 500, then we can get the futures. Yeah, so in the futures, you can see that uh, we were we were way down here. We were really pushing it uh, earlier today. So this is another day where the bulls are stepping in to buy. It is actually quite it it is rather important for the bulls to have a have a decent day today because this is the end of the week. Okay, this is Friday. The last thing the bulls want is to have some sell off, especially into the close, because that can make people more uneasy, and you could all of a sudden get a bunch of sell orders. We are really stuck in a zone, okay? You can see that we are we are being squeezed between the 20-day moving average in purple and the 100-day and also the 200-day here above us. When price action is squeezed in this manner, it usually resolves in a major way. And then, of course, you need to put, put you know, uh, stake your position. Are you bullish or are you bearish? As I have said many times before, I find it extremely difficult to imagine that we are going to see a new all-time highs, that you know the longest bull market, bull, market, bull market in history will be followed by the shortest bear. That doesn't make any sense, but then again, the fact of the matter is, and this is a deep, profound fact, money is make-believe, it really is. This is, this is make-believe like you see kids in the kindergarten, where they imagine thing, things and they just make things up. Money in the current economic system is not backed by anything real. It is actually, literally, make-believe. It is a social contract as long as people believe in it, then it, then anything can happen. It is fully possible that we can see new all-time highs. Because people then have a collective psychological belief that there will be future profits. Because of this huge psychological effect to the current monetary system, it also means that it is more risky. It can move big up and big down. In this setup here, it could be prudent to stay a bit on the sidelines. If you are going to be a participant, I would definitively say this is the, this is definitively the time to be market neutral. Whatever you do, of course, let the trend be your friend.